Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name is Cameron and today I'm going to be giving you my list of the five rye whiskeys that I think all of you should have. Now before we get into it, I just have to say thank you to the Bourbon Junkies for calling me out to make my version of this list. They put out their video of their list of these five ryes last week. And at the end of that video, they called out two channels uh, to continue this trend. They called out Hot Buttery Rolls and Drums and Drams. And so again, I just have to say thank you, especially as a young channel here in the Whiskey Tube community, uh, to get called out by the Bourbon Junkies is pretty darn cool. But I also have to say screw you, Dan and Sean, because this video has made me realize that I have a terrible inventory of rye whiskey. As I was sitting down to kind of put this together, I realized I don't have any of the super premium offerings. Uh, none of the Michters, uh, the Turkey Cornerstone, the Kentucky Owl, none of that stuff. Uh, I have samples of some of those great bottles, but I only wanted to include the things that I actually owned on this list and could really you know, talk about and, and things that I had a lot of experience with. Uh, so, you know, none of these are going to be like the, the heavy hitter rye whiskeys. Most of them are going to be under $70, actually. So I should probably just rename this video like the five most affordable rye whiskeys that you should have or something like that. Um, and obviously now I'm going to have to go spend a lot more money to upgrade my rye collection. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it here. Uh, first, I'm going to run down the categories very quickly, and then we'll start talking about the whiskeys. A lot of you are going to recognize these categories from some other videos that you've seen in the, uh, in the whiskey tube space here. First category is the Daily Sipper. Second is the Cheap Mixer. Third, the Impress Your Guests bottle. Fourth, we have the Friday Night Pour. For me, that's like the long week of work, sit down, you want something nice. Uh, and finally, number five is the Special Occasion bottle. So that's what we've got here. That's the setup. Let's go ahead and get into my list of these five rye whiskeys that I think all of you should have. All right, so first up is the Daily Sipper category, and this one was a no-brainer. As you can see, I went with the Old Forester Rye Whiskey. This is a fairly new release from Old Forester that has been out for about a year and a half or two years at this point. And when it did hit shelves, it totally caught the world by storm. Uh, reviewers, whiskey tubers, and just the whiskey community as a whole raved about this thing. Uh, and that's because it is really a do-it-all rye whiskey at a great price point and at a great proof. So let's talk about its stats here. Uh, 100 proof. It's going to be a great neat sipper. It'll hold up over some ice and also do really well on a cocktail if you want to do that with it. Um, at $20 to $25 MSRP, it's super cheap and an incredibly affordable option. The availability is generally pretty good, although recently um, some different markets have seen shortages of this bottle in particular, uh, including right here in Ohio where I live. I have not seen this um, in any of the liquor stores that I've been to recently, but I think that's probably only going to be a, a temporary problem uh, for whatever reason. But that's probably because it's so good, so affordable, and there's been a lot of hype behind it for a sustained period of time. Now, let's talk about the flavor profile here, which is really like the standout part of all of this. This has a high malt content in the mash bill, and what that means is it's got a really full, sweet underlying layer to this whiskey, and that kind of tames down a little bit of the rye spice that you would expect from a cheap rye. A lot of those cheaper ryes are gonna have sharper characteristics, more pine, more mint, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, but because this has that high malt content, it's really rounded, really sweet, and just a great approachable uh, rye whiskey. I think it's a great entryway for bourbon drinkers to get into rye, and I also think it's a great entryway for scotch drinkers who are used to that malt content uh, to also get into rye whiskeys here. It's got a little bit of tropical fruit, a little bit of banana, some typical black pepper, rye characteristics, and caramel sweetness. Again, I just think it is an all-around incredible rye whiskey, and if you don't have a bottle of this, you need to run out right now and pick one up. Next up is the cheap mixer category, and I know some of you might be a little upset that I decided to include a somewhat allocated Buffalo Trace product in this video, but before you judge me too hard, just hear me out. Now let's talk about the whiskey first. This is the Sazerac Rye six year whiskey coming in at 90 proof and retailing for about 22 to 30 bucks depending on where you're at. We will talk about availability, but I first wanna get into the flavor profile of this particular whiskey. I think the reason this is a great mixer for me 
is because of this flavor profile. It's very floral. It's got a nice bit of spice going on in here. And it's really anise or licorice forward, which I know a lot of people don't like so much. But for me, uh, I don't like it either. But I think it does really well in certain cocktails because those qualities help this cut through all of the different mixers that you might use with it. Obviously, the Sazerac cocktail is great for this. Uh, that absinthe rinse plays really nicely with those floral and licorice type qualities in the whiskey. But even like Manhattans, I think this does really well in Manhattans as well. Now, the 90 proof doesn't help it. I wish this was about 100 proof. It would do a little bit better for me as a mixer. But again, the flavor profile, the sharpness of that profile uh, kind of helps the proof even though it's only at 90. Now, obviously, the elephant in the room with this is the availability of the whiskey. We don't ever see it here in Ohio. And if it does show up, uh, it is immediately snatched up by the truck chasers on delivery days. It's rarer than Blanton's E.H. Taylor and Eagle Rare for whatever reason. <laughs> I have no idea. When I go out of state to you know certain parts of California, go down to New Orleans, uh, this thing just sits on shelves. So, you know, I, I understand that the availability is not great. But the one thing I wanted to say about this is uh, here in Ohio on the local secondary market, the upcharge to get one of these is like eight to 10 bucks. I see these move for $35 regularly. And if you really want a bottle, I don't think $35 is too much to pay for this. I know some of you are sticklers for retail pricing for MSRP and all that kind of stuff, but I'd rather save my time waiting in lines, pay a couple extra bucks and just get one of these from somebody locally uh, who is willing to spend that time in those lines. It's nothing special. But again, I like it as a mixer. I drink it neat once or twice a year on occasion. Uh, but if you don't have a bottle of this and you're looking for something, especially for that Sazerac, that Manhattan or other cocktails like that, uh, you should definitely pick one of these up. All right, so for the impress your guests category, I decided to go with something just a little bit different. This is a pretty niche craft bottling from a local distillery here in Columbus, Ohio. Some of you may have heard of Middle West Spirits. Um, I know that they get a, a decent bit of distribution out of state, and a lot of my friends have, have heard of them, especially their standard offerings. But what we're going to be looking at today is their cask strength, single barrel, dark pumpernickel rye whiskey. Now, on the drum right now, I have a couple of different uh, cask strength single barrels from Middle West. This is their four grain bourbon their wheat whiskey, and in the middle is their dark pumpernickel rye. A lot of the standard bottlings, the lower proofed versions and batched versions of these um, are used as mixers. A lot of people like them as daily sippers. But I think where Middle West really shines is with their single barrel cask strength offerings. Now, the reason I think this is an impress your guests bottle is like number one, it's a local distillery. It's, it's a craft offering, and I think it's going to shock your guests when they just they taste how darn good this stuff is. It's a total flavor bomb. The, the rye spice is integrated so nicely within a very full-bodied whiskey. It's not too minty, too piney or anything like that. And then when you tell them that it's only over three years old and it's coming from a local distillery and it's only $55 a bottle, not like the $95 peerless rye or whatever else, uh, they're probably going to be pretty impressed by that. I love everything that Middle West does, even with a lot of variance between their barrels. Uh, I think it's absolutely outstanding. So if you can find a Middle West dark pumpernickel rye, single barrel cask strength bottling, uh, you should snatch it up immediately. There is no better rye whiskey to be your affordable Friday night pour than this Pikesville six-year rye coming from the Heaven Hill Distillery. Now, I love this stuff because it is really, really drinkable, very approachable uh, from a bourbon drinker's point of view, especially because this is the barely legal rye mash bill from Heaven Hill. And it also comes in at a whopping 110 proof, which is pretty much my favorite proof for any sort of sipper. When you go above 55% or 110 proof, you start getting into that range where, you know, you're being challenged by the whiskey in some circumstances. And when you go below it, it tends to get maybe a little bit watery. I think 110 is the perfect sipping proof. This thing has just the right amount of that sort of green rye spice integrated within a really fantastic bourbon profile, you know, because of that barely legal rye mash bill. It just balances everything so, so nicely. And I think that extra rye kick in the Pikesville 
makes it way more interesting than other comparable bourbons. This thing retails between 40 and 50 bucks. When I go down to Kentucky, I tend to see it for about $45, and it's pretty available down there. In Ohio, a little bit harder to find the Pikesville for whatever reason, but I know out of state, a lot of people don't have any issues. So for me, my Friday night pour, if I've had a long week, I want something with a little bit of teeth to it, but not quite barrel strength, not quite, you know, knock me out of my chair or anything like that. I always go for this Pikesville rye. And as you can see, um, I have hardly any left. And that's just because I love this stuff. So if you don't own a bottle of the Pikesville rye, run, don't walk, and please only pay about 40 to 50 bucks for one of these. Last but not least is the special occasion bottle. And I have decided to go with the Alberta Premium Cast Strength Rye Whiskey coming in at 66% ABV. Now, to be totally honest with you, I would put something else in this category if I owned a bottle of it, uh, probably like a Michter's 10 Year Rye or a Parker's Heritage Heavy Char, uh, something like that. Like I said at the beginning of the video, a little short on rye whiskey here, so I had to work with what I had. Now, the Alberta Premium is a great whiskey. It's really in your face, but also has a lot of sweetness to balance it out. Uh, we all know it won Jim Murray's World Whiskey of the Year or whatever, which is kind of hilarious, but it is, it is a very good whiskey. For me, it's a mood pour. You know, I'm probably not going to pull this bottle out to celebrate the birth of my first child <laughs> or closing on a house or anything like that. I'd probably pull out some BTAC or some Chateau de Labotte or whatever else. But again, this has a time and a place, and I know a lot of people out there really like this, especially those that are chasing high-proof and very in-your-face whiskeys. I don't have much more to say about it. Again, it's got a, a lot of really great sweetness, a lot of sort of pine pine mintiness going on in there as well, and, and you've really got to like that Canadian rye profile, um, or else this might not be the whiskey for you. But for $70 and being sort of somewhat allocated. I think it's a great buy, and I do think that it's something that every whiskey drinker should probably have, especially because it, it allowed me to get a taste for Canadian rye and sort of appreciate a style that I wasn't super familiar with uh, before I had this whiskey. So again, the Alberta Premium Cast Strength Rye, a great option, and if you can find it around 70 bucks, please go ahead and pick one of these up. All right, so that's all I've got for today's video. Thank you all so much for checking it out. Now it's my turn to call somebody out to make their list of these five rye whiskeys, and I am going to call out Adriana from Whiskey Mountains. If you haven't checked out her content, go over to her channel, give it a subscribe, check out some of her videos. She does some really cool stuff with hiking, combining nature and uh, whiskey reviews. It's really, really cool, and recently, She's been focusing on some rye whiskeys, uh, the Wild Turkey Rare Breed Rye, High West Bur Rye, and also a Blind Rye Flight out on her hikes. And so again, if you haven't checked out her channel, go give it a subscribe, hit that bell notification button for her, and, uh, and hopefully you'll see when her list of the five rye whiskeys drops, and you can check out how that compares to my list, the Bourbon Junkies, the Bourbon Van, and everybody else. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, if you enjoy Drums and Drams, you want to become a part of the community and help support the channel, get some exclusive content, you can always check out the Patreon. The link is in the description below. And uh, otherwise, that's all I've got. Again, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you decide to pick up some of these rye whiskeys, these affordable rye whiskeys, and I promise I'm going to go get some better rye whiskeys over the next couple of weeks. Cheers, and I'll see you next time here on Drums and Drams.